The back has 20 female student numbers and 25 male student numbers in it. Two student numbers are to be randomly selected without replacement. What is the probability that both numbers will be for members of the same sex? Okay, so this is a probability question. So we see that, what is the probability? And it says probably that both numbers will be for members of the same sex. So when I work this out, I might think, well, gee, they're selecting two numbers, so I'm probably thinking that it's multiplication rule of probability, right? And, you know, to start out then, I would normally say, okay, um, we're going to write a statement then, right? The probability that I get two numbers from the same sex. Two numbers from the same sex. Okay, so that'd be a good way to start out the problem, just expressing what the problem is actually asking for, right? And now, at this point, you might come along and say, okay, well, I'm selecting two numbers, right? So I should have two spaces to write the corresponding probabilities for each event or each selection, right? All right, and that'd be a, that'd be a logical way to start out. But remember, I always recommend that you identify what this first position should stand for before you put any numbers into it. So when you go to put this in, you might say, well, gee, what's this space supposed to represent? It's supposed to be the probability that the first number I take is from where? That's kind of a tough one. You know, you might naively say, well, uh, the first number is, say, female, and then the second number be female. That would be that two numbers are from the same sex. But you know, why female? Why not male, for example? So if you're a little more sophisticated, you might say, well, you know, in fact, it doesn't matter what this first number is. It really doesn't matter. You might say, well, it could be whatever it wants to be, male or female. What matters is that the second one matches the first one. Well, see, that right away is a problem in probability. You don't want to have an ambiguous first option here. You can't say here, well, it doesn't matter, because it always kind of matters. If it really truly doesn't matter, um, then you have to have a way to show that mathematically it would be the same either way, it turns out. And, um, and I would say here that it's not the same. Because let's take an argument, for example. Say the first person selected is a, a male number. The first number selected is a male number. Well, then out of the, um, the probability of that occurring, then, of course, it would be 25 male numbers at a total of 45 numbers, right? And then the next probability would have to match that. So you'd have to say, well, what happened here was that a male was taken, so there'd be, you know, say, 24 male numbers left out of only 44 numbers remaining, something like that. That's a very different probability than if this first one was female, because females are only 20 out of 45 numbers. So the probability changes. So in fact, uh, that, that can't be the case that it doesn't matter what the first one is. is. I mean, I understand the logic that saying it doesn't really matter because you just want to get the same sex when you take the two numbers, then you just to make sure whatever this came out to be, this one matches. But a better way to do this problem, a more accurate way, is to actually be more explicit about this statement. This statement by itself is not good enough. So what we want to do instead is to say, um, well, how does that occur exactly? Whenever you have this ambiguous issue where you don't know what the first place or space represents, if you really can't define it clearly, it's because this is not defined clearly enough. So what I want to do instead is to try to write this in a better way. So I'm going to write the probability of, and I'm going to think about how does it actually turn out that they're both the same sex? Well, the answer is that you have, say, two girl numbers, right? Or, the other way it could turn out to have the same sex is if you have, what, two boy numbers. Those are the two ways that we end up having the same sex selected. And in this case, the word or fits naturally. In fact, you can really not say it without that, right? I mean, you have to say two numbers from the same sex. That means either two girls or two boy numbers. There's really no way to say it without using the word or. And we know that in probability, the word or translates into a plus sign. So in that case, what we're going to do is actually work out two different scenarios and add them together. But since both of those scenarios will involve selecting two student numbers, we're going to have multiplication rule for both of those. But then the word or means we should add the results of the two multiplication rule problems. So this is a hybrid rule. So I put this problem in here to illustrate that not all the rules of probability have to be distinct and separate. In other words, you don't always have to work just with addition rule or just with multiplication rule or just with conditional probability. You sometimes work with multiplication rule and addition rule in the same problem. And so it's the two numbers being selected that tells me it's multiplication rule, but it's this necessary word or that tells me I also have to add. 
Now, the important thing to mention about this problem is that even though we have the word or and we're using the addition rule, these events are mutually exclusive. You either get two girl numbers or two boy numbers. There's no way you can do both things at the same time because you're only taking two numbers. So either they're both from girls or both from boys. You can't have both two girl numbers and two boy numbers occur at the same selection of two tickets or two numbers, right? Okay, so we don't have to worry about subtracting anything off. We're not double counting or anything. We'll just do the probability that it's two girls added to the probability it's two boys, and that will finish the problem. Okay, well, that's really the hard part. The rest is pretty easy. The rest is just filling in the numbers. So let's imagine that this first scenario is the scenario of getting two girl numbers without replacement. Don't forget, we're not putting the numbers back in, right? So I reach into the bag, I'm going to pretend that I get a girl on the first time. What was the probability of that occurring? Well, it would have been 20 girl numbers, female numbers. I have a total of 45 total numbers in the bag, right? Then I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to assume that that first number I took out was for a girl, and I go back in and I'm going to try to get another girl number, and I'm going to assume that um, there will only be 19 girl numbers left out of 44 total numbers, right? So that's the probability that I get two girl numbers. In the case of, you know, starting all over again, a new bag, it has 45 numbers in it, all fresh from scratch again. We go into the bag, what's the probability we get a boy number the first selection? Well, there would be 25 numbers corresponding to boy student IDs out of a total of 45 students. And then I take that number, I put it aside, I assume that I got a boy's number. When I go back in, how many boy numbers will be left? Only 24 out of a total of 44. And this will be the final solution after I work this problem out with my calculator. Okay, so let's just plug the rest of those in. We'll have uh, 20 times 19 plus 25 times 24. That's the top of the fraction, right? And that will be divided by the common denominator for these two fractions of 45 times 44. And when we do that, we end up with the answer 49.5%. So 0 0.495, or in other words, 49.5%. And that's it. So pretty close to half the time that will occur.